Hey everyone, welcome to WOW, Waves of Wellness number 40. Can you believe it? We've almost been out here for a whole year and so excited to see all of you. Is anybody brand new today? Can you raise your hand either like this or digitally? Let us know. We want to hear from you. Let me know if you guys see anybody. No, nobody's brand new. Darn it. <laughs> I like to hear you guys talk and tell us about yourselves. Um, so then you guys know who I am and you know, Dr. Gloria, and I'm sure you also know Kelly. So my focus here is always to help you create more life in your years, not just years in your life and quality of life matters. My, my shtick back when I had my own company as a health coach was helping you age stronger and healthier instead of sicker and weaker. Because most people we know, when they start getting to a certain age, they just start going downhill. And one of my old clients, it's actually kind of funny, just literally like a week ago, she was so happy she got her device and she does CrossFit like me and her daughter is a coach. And her daughter told her that after the age of 50, that you can't get stronger. And I am like, no way is that true. So yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday we were in the gym doing shoulder presses and I hit a new personal record. So I am like, okay, I've got to text her and let her know that that is not what in my world. And remember, you are all creators and you are creating your own experience. And so you get to choose how you want to live and how you want to perform and how you want to be each and every day, okay? So don't let somebody else's limitations resonate with you. You can just say, yep, not in my world. That's what I did, okay? And so anyways, I say that not to brag, but just to encourage you that any of us can do it, okay? And Dr. Gloria, you all know, I mean, she's so prolific with writing and with the recipes and with everything that she does to help our entire community. It's hard to believe that she's been in practice for over 40 years, right? She's just a wealth of knowledge. But today you don't hear from us. Today you guys get to hear from Nurse Kelly. And I feel like Nurse Kelly is just the bomb with our support crew. But that girl is so wise and she just has so much to offer, not only with the health stuff, but with other fun things as well. And you guys heard her before doing a talk on fasting, and you got to hear her doing her presentation on so veggio tones. And we need more blog content. So I've asked her to do some blogging about some different types of topics to do with frequency. So today she's going to talk about dowsing. You can use a pendulum or you can use a dowsing rod. All right. But first I want to hear from you. So, you know, we mostly start these shows with just talking to you guys who here has actually implemented any of the changes or any of the recommendations that we've had this last month. Maybe it was like the liver cleanse or any... <laughs> I can't even remember what we had before that, but we always have good things for you to apply to your life. So who would like to share something, anything that you guys have added from the wow call that you've noticed make a change in your life? Oh, I know. We also had Marion talk recently about the herbs. And um, so that was really, really cool. Anybody want to add anything? Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Go ahead. You can unmute. I can't hear you. you can't hear you, dear. That's weird. She's unmuted. No, now you're muted. <laughs> yeah, you're still muted. Darn it. Well, Tracy, remember I mentioned to you that that when Word updated my computer, I had no sound. It took it took Brian over two hours to be on call with tech support, and we finally got it back. So she might be having the same issue if she's on a PC that I did. It just happened oh. day before yesterday. 
Maybe you need to re-update your Zoom. That's what happened to me one time too. Did it? Okay, well, Linda M, has, Linda M has her hand up. So while Cheryl's trying to get some sound, we'll hear from Linda M. I don't know if you want to hear this or not, but I did the liver cleanse this week. Of course we want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. Um, the first time after, well, see, it was early this morning at four o'clock. I finally um, had a BM. Urged. And yeah, that was my first one. And after an hour or so, I checked and I didn't see anything other than maybe look like coffee grounds mm -hmm. and then about six o'clock um i have to say my husband does not like sick people but i got sick on the stomach the second time <laughs> and i got dizzy when i stood up and i laid down on the floor and got sick on my stomach <laughs> and my husband came in the bathroom and threw a towel at me and he says now what are you supposed to do <laughs> 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 I said, well, just leave me alone. <laughs> I said, just, I've, I've got my towel. He said, I'll clean it up. Don't worry about it. And um, then I said, I'll just wait till it passes. And it did. And I was fine. Oh, you poor but, thing. No, that's all right. But um, I just thought that was very funny. And you guys would enjoy that. <laughs> did you pass any stones after that? I didn't, I didn't notice any, no. Um, other okay. than the gravelly, you know, look right. like coffee grounds, but that's yeah. And I, I told Tracy when I did mine, that's all I got was like gravel, almost like sand, right? It was like funny little yeah that come down. That means one of two things: one, you really have a lot of stones, and you need to do it again. Maybe use less oil so that it doesn't upset your stomach. Takes take half the amount of oil. Uh, or it means that you don't have any stones and you're just getting out the little gravel that forms in there in a natural basis. But when I do that and only get gravel, I do another cleanse two or three weeks later, depending on my schedule and how I'm feeling so that you can. And if you get gravel again, then it usually means there isn't anything else to, to purge. OK, so I don't we use have the word a gallbladder. purge on the last day. Huh? Yeah, I don't have a gallbladder. Okay, but that could be why you need to do another purge. So think about it. And if you choose to do that, wait a couple weeks, two, three weeks, and then do it again. And if you still get the same result, just use half the oil, hun. That are using okay, the whole amount of oil. I, was use half. I felt like I was getting too much yesterday when I did it. And I thought Yeah, Tracy did too. Tracy doesn't like the larger amount. I don't have a problem as long as I put it in grapefruit juice. Otherwise it's nauseating. So just cut the oil down to half especially if you don't have a gallbladder and, and give that to your body, but give it a, a couple of weeks to relax. Okay. Before you try another one. All right. Okay. Thank you. You know, I'm glad thank you brought that. that up, Linda, because I felt the same way. I was so, I did not sleep that. Oh, she knows. <laughs> Cynthia's trying to call me. Um, I did not sleep at all. I, I was so nauseous from all that oil and, um, so if I do it again, I'm only going to do like way less of the oil, maybe half. I don't know yet. Um, yeah. So I want to warn everybody to be cautious with that because, you know, um, when I did it before, the first time that I got the stones that I showed you, okay, those are mine. <laughs> I only did yeah. a half a cup of oil total. And for mm -hmm. my body, that was enough to pull the stones. But drinking 12 ounces made me so sick and so nauseous. I felt awful. And I didn't see the big stones like I saw the first time. So everybody's body's different. We've been talking like exactly. that for a long time. I've done it for 35 years with patients and very few people have nausea. But if they do, then the oil is too much. Cut it in half. You're right. Cut so. it in half and, and put it in something that you like, you know, like I have a lady that only uses apple juice. I use grapefruit juice. Grape juice is really good too. So just like Tracy said, we're individuals. And so, and also Tracy, one thing that after you told me that depends on our body weight. If we have a real dense body weight, we have a little bit more pounds on us. You don't, you're very slim. Your body's probably not going to tolerate more than just a little bit of oil. The main thing is you soften the stones, then you purge, and you should be fine. But if you're having the nausea, Linda, 
and with no gallbladder, I would say do exactly what Tracy said. Use just, you know, a half a cup of oil or something just to force those stones that are in there to come out. And if you don't get any, better off. That means that you've done it twice and all there is is what we call gravel, which means there isn't anything else to purge. Okay. Okay. Well, that's Thank you for everybody to know. And I saw Cheryl, she shared in the chat because she, she didn't get her sound. Um, that if you, she got yellow marble sized stones on the second morning, just a few green peas on the first day and some smaller things on the third day. I drank 12 ounces of oil and on the third, four ounces, I got nauseated. Next time I'll do tw 12 ounces. No, I think next time you'll do half. <laughs> yeah, next so, time you do half. But, you get but the other thing is, did you take pictures? <laughs> we need show and tell. Because when you say you got out marble sized pieces, God, yes. <laughs> uh, cut down the oil. And if it were me, I can't give you specific medical advice. If it were me, you definitely need to do it again. If you got marble sized pieces, like Tracy did when she did her other one, you didn't tell them it was your stones you showed, but now she gave it away. Um, if you get big pieces like she did, you need to do it again until you get gravel or sand. Okay, then you know that you clean things out. And that's why it's good to do it every three months or at least twice a year, because when you do, uh, you find the amount of oil that agrees with your body. And again, it's body weight. If you weigh 100 pounds, you're not going to tolerate the same oil that a 200 pound person would. And then that gives you the idea, uh, you know, that gives you the signal that you have more there. So do it again. If I were you, I would do it again. But give your body a couple weeks, two, three weeks in between before you do it again. But thank you. And too bad you didn't do show and tell. I just ordered some more fishnets from Amazon. <laughs> so the next time I do it, if I oh, get wait. something, I can do show and tell. Carol has her thing up. But Let's she's see. not talking. It's not going to go to speaker view. But oh, oh okay. So yeah, I can wow. see that. Good we job, can girl. Can, can you all see them? How large they are? Wow. Okay, Cheryl, that's a good job, hun. But if it were me, I would do another one. You need to. Yeah, good job. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Nita got one the size of a quarter. Yeah, Ooh. it's scary. Now I want to. I want to remind everybody. If you hadn't taken something to soften those stones, do you see why some of my patients ended up in emergency? Because it gets caught in the bile duct, you end up with a fever, you end up with, with inflammation and an infection. So that's why I'm so proactive on this particular cleanse. But yes, to Tracy's point, not everybody's gonna tolerate the same amount of oil and I probably should have specified that. So Tracy being very slim and fit, uh, our our in-house athlete, um, she doesn't tolerate as much. Linda obviously doesn't tolerate it either, but she doesn't have a gallbladder. Tracy has a gallbladder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there's okay. a difference too. Okay. So thank so you we, for that. We got to run because Kelly needs to get her stuff down. Yes, and if yes. we have time, we'll do some questions before the meditation. It just depends on Perfect. if we have time. So, and then whoever asked, it does not hurt for the stones to come out. They come out during your bowel movement the next morning. Right. Oh. All right. <laughs> now that we had that beautiful discussion, um, <laughs> TMI for so many people, but you know, that's what we talk about. So anyways, you guys, I know, you know, nurse Kelly, I know that you have read her beautiful things that she has written in support, if you've contacted support. I hope you have heard her present before, but I wanted, so Kelly and I, before QHS, we were part of a small group and I used to lead a meditation once a week and we ended up starting to meet more regularly. And um, she just has the most beautiful soul. And I just, I know oh. that she's, been, we took a pendulum class together and I know she's been playing with hers for quite a while. So I wanted her to come and share today. So hello, Miss Kelly. Hi everybody. Hello, How are you? It's all? great to have it's great to have you on. We love it. Thank you. <laughs> so Kelly, yeah. how did you feel when I first said, hey, do you want to do a presentation on dowsing? I was like, sure, no problem. Whatever you want. <laughs> now, was your first experience the class we took with Maggie? Yeah, it was. Okay. Um, and since then, okay. what have you been doing? So I don't use it every day. Um I, I do, so I have a couple of different ones. I have one in a, my travel bag, which I didn't pull out. 
I have this one, which is hard to see. Um, it's just a quartz, quartz one. Um, I have this one, which is like the colors of the chakra. Um, and so I use oh, yeah. some different things. And I even have the, I have that bobber thing that you were, you were showing before. Hang on, I'm just going to try to jump down. Sorry. Um, I have the bobber thing. I have a hard time using the bobber. I feel like I don't get consistent results with yeah. that one. It's yeah. hard to use. And I do have the dousing rods. So these ones are mostly used for like finding objects. And when they, when they find it, they sort of like cross over. Um, I don't really look for stuff like that, that in, especially water. So uh, I haven't really used these as much. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a klutz and I'm like, I'm going to like impale myself on these or something if I trip and fall. <laughs> oh. So I put those over on the side. I tend to use this one, the, the chakra one actually for chakra work. Um, I've been experimenting with that a lot. Um, in fact, I just did a treatment on my sister yesterday and a treatment on Mimi this morning. <laughs> and I used my chakra um, pendulum. And so I've trained this pendulum to act a little bit differently than I've trained the quartz chakra. Um, but they will generally, because it's me that's controlling it, they'll pretty much act the same way. This one I usually use for you know, just asking kind of like questions. And this one, I do more chakra work because, you know, it's got the chakra colors. Um, and oh, do you want to share with support. your PowerPoint and then we'll talk more personal stuff? Yeah, let's go with, let's go with that. Because some people might not even know exactly what it is at all. Okay. Oh, that's cute. Care? <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> that's that's like our Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> So yeah, so when I first learned how to do dousing, I was kind of intimidated by it. I was like, what is this? What is it going to do? Like, am I contacting spirits or something? And it's nothing like that at all. Um, it's really just an effective way to get in touch with your own subconscious or your higher self or with the bioelectric field surrounding you. Um, and you can use that to answer certain questions, you know, that you have you know, it, it's, it's very similar to muscle testing, like we, what we did with Ellen way back when, and we first started uh, with the wow calls. Right. It's very much like that. There's no like outside forces. You're not like communing with spirits or anything like that. Um, it's all you and your subconscious or your, uh, your, you know, your, your, your field surrounding you directly. Um, and it causes, if you, if you um, move to the next slide, uh, you, you would use the pendulum or the rod. There's also a, a forked, like forked switch or something like that. I think they use that more in like, you know, out in like places where they don't have stuff like third world countries and stuff. They'll just take a branch off of a tree and they'll like split it in half Oh yeah. And use that to guide them. Um, yeah. and then like the bobber that you were, that you were showing before, um, I don't even use that one anymore because I just feel like it's difficult to use for me. Um, so what do you need, right? So you need you need the tool, you need a quiet environment, you need to have a clear question or goal in mind. You need to have a trained tool, right? So you have to treat you have to train your tool to tell you what you what you want to know from it, right? So if you if it's just moving in all these different ways and you haven't designated what those meanings stand for, you won't know what kind of response you're getting and if it's reliable or unreliable. You need to be calm. You need to be hydrated. Um, you just need to be kind of like zen, right? I don't ever try to douse when I'm upset about something because your body's just, you know, overwhelmed and you're not going to get clear answers. You're just going to kind of be either floundering around or you may get unreliable answers. And you need to have an open mind because when I first started, I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here, you know? And I was like, I don't think this is going to work. And so I actually, I, I think I had sent this to Tracy. I did this like video and I had my arm propped up on like a thing. And I'm like, look, it's not me moving it. It's not me moving it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so naive at the time, right? <laughs> I was just like, I can't believe it's moving. I'm not touching it. You I are the one. Her. So if you go on to the next screen. Um, it talks about how to choose your tool. Um, so 
I always use one like this on a string. Now it could be anything. It doesn't have to be something fancy. In fact, I don't know if it was Maggie or somebody else in our group who, when they were talking about it, they had always just used a piece of string with like a, a screw and a ball bearing on it. That's to Karen. It, weight to swing. I don't, it might've been Karen. Yeah. I think it was Karen. Um, and she's like, I, I haven't ever spent money on it. I just do something that's like hanging around my house. So it could be as simple as that. You don't have to buy these really expensive, fancy ones or anything. I think I got these on Etsy for a couple bucks each, something like that. And they had like free shipping at the time or something. Um, so, you, and I use, if I were to be like looking for a source of water or trying to decide what the best place in my yard was to plant the garden or looking for a lost object, or I don't know, anything like that, I would probably use the, the the dousing rods because it would be harder to get a clear answer with this than it is with this, which actually points in a specific direction. One um, of the members actually texted me and she said she uses those copper ones that you have. Yep. And she looks for energy coming in, like negative energy coming into her home. And then she puts a copper rod outside of her home, wherever that negative energy is coming in. Yeah, I've heard oh, of that. What a great and idea. I, went to, I live in South Dakota now. And when we first moved here, we were going to like all these like home shows and stuff like that. And there was a, a gentleman there who does like energy work and he did a reading on me and he just uses one. It's kind of hard to do here because I don't have a lot of space. But basically what it was doing was um, reading my energy field and it, it rotated in like whatever direction, I guess it had to do with something with my polarity or whatever. And however many times it spun told him what needed, like what chakra or what meridian or what area of my life I needed to work on at that time. So he had gotten very used to just using one for that specific purpose. Oh, cool. So there's lots of different ways you can use it and, and information that you can divine. You can go to the next slide. So how do you train your tool? You can teach your tool to do whatever you want it to do. It's your tool and it's going to work with you. So it has to be something that works for you. Um, for example, when you're using the pendulum, I have this one, which is my shocker one. And I have trained this one to move counterclockwise in a circle for any areas that are blocked energies or negative energies or just stagnant or whatever you want to call it um, or wherever there's pain or inflammation it goes in a counterclockwise direction and I've then also trained it to come to a complete stop and then start moving in the opposite direction clockwise to add positive energy to add comfort peace inner light, price consciousness, all those types of things. So when it comes to a full stop, then, then I know it's, it's time to move to the next chakra or to the next area of the body that I'm done working in that area. It's cleared it, move, you know, balance it out, add it in the good stuff. It's done. Okay. Now I move to the next area. Oh. And that's what I do. That's how I do with my chakra. For my, so it's like you create a void by clearing out all of the negative stuff. And now you have an empty vessel, if you will. And then you fill it back up with what you intend to fill it back up with. Yeah. And I don't even think I read that anywhere. I think it's just sort of like what I did. Like, well, I don't want any of this bad stuff. It's like cleaning your house, right? Yeah. You want, you want yeah. to take all the garbage and stuff out, start with a, a, a tabula rasa or, or, or clear slate. And then you add things back in that work with your feng shui. Love it. Right? Um, and so, so this Kelly, one, question, do you, do you talk to it and tell it? Because I do real well with this, with it, with the quartz. I like you don't do well with the rods at all. So I stopped using them when I had my farm, but do you talk to it and say, I want to clear all the negative energy? How do you, so that our members understand too, because I'm confused about that. I never cleared it like that. So how you do you, can. what do you do? Do you do it out loud or do you just think of it in your consciousness? I've done it both ways. So when I was working okay. with this one first, okay. this was the one I kind of learned on. I did this mm -hmm. one audibly out, out loud. This mm -hmm. one, 
I just sort of trained it as I was working along with it and said, you know, I, I want to know when it's done, like remove the, the the negative energies, but it would just keep spinning. Right. And like, well, how do I know right. when it's done? It's just going to keep spinning. So I, I sort of like subconsciously said, okay, when it's done removing all of the negative energies or, or removing the blockages come to a stop. So I know when you're, when it's, it's ready to move on to the next thing and then just automatically mm-hmm. add the good stuff back in. Like that was sort of like a subconscious thing. And so now okay. it's just working. I'm not even speaking, doing anything. I'm just letting it do all the work all the way throughout the, the body. Uh, For this okay. one, this one, I, I, I trained audibly and later on in the, I think it's like the last slide, second, to last slide. It doesn't have to be anything special. This one, it's more like if it moves forward and backward or north to south, then that's a, that's a yes for me. If it's side to side or what you would call east to west, that's a no. That's a no. Yeah, that's how mine does. It, sometimes there's like a diagonal. So when it's diagonal, for me, that's like an unknown, unable to answer. Or um, if I'm uh, the other thing that I've sort of trained it to do is if I'm asking an either or question, because sometimes I'll do that to get clarification. Like when you're using like a chart, sometimes you can't tell if it's pointing to this thing or to that thing. So then I'll say, was it A or B? You know, if those are the two choices. And for me, whichever one I said first, if it was that one, it'll it'll point to the left diagonal. And if it was the mm-hmm. second one, it'll point to the right diagonal. That's how I've trained my pendulum. Cool. So I don't normally get circular answers. For me, in between questions, it will come to sort of like a stop. And then I know it's clear and I can ask my next question. So, because I don't like knowing, like, sometimes it takes a while, like it's trying to think, right? And you're like, is, is this a yes or is yeah. this a no? So I like when it comes to a full stop, so I know, okay, it's done. It's it's done thinking. <laughs> um, so yeah. what do you need to do? What, do you, what, what tips do you need to do? First of all, you need to be hydrated, okay? And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, that next, but you need water in your life for everything. And it's very important in dousing as well. You need to have a clear mind. So whether you need to meditate, say a little prayer, if you're the type of person that feels that you need to do something to bring protection to yourself, whatever you need to do to feel calm and peace of mind. This isn't something you would do like in the middle of a car accident, right? <laughs> you're not going to pull out your, your pendulum and start, you know, dousing in the middle of a car accident or something. You want to just kind of be relaxed and just present. Um, you need to be very specific about what you want to know. Short, simple questions, typically yes, no, are best to start with. Is it yes? Is it no? If you you ask a sentence that's like a paragraph long, it's going to be like, I'm not really sure what it's asking me. And it's trying, it's like kind of rolling around and, you know, just, you're not going to get very reliable answers. Um, so you want to use clear words and phrases and you want to use the right tool for whatever you're looking for, right? So if I'm looking for a lost object and, it, and I'm saying, show me where it's at and it's doing this and I start walking this way and then all of a sudden it keeps going that way and I'm in the wall. Well, now what do I do? <laughs> so it's not the best tool to use for something. Like, maybe somebody has figured out a good way to do that. I haven't, but... <laughs> Oh, I guess one way you could do it is you could draw like a little tiny diagram of like your house, like a floor plan, and you could have it point to the room that it's supposed to be in. And that might narrow it down for you. I don't know. That might be a way. Um, you want to be relaxed and hold the, the, the pendulum. So it's got this long string on it, right? But I'm not going to hold it like this because when I ask it a question, the, the flexion, you know, the, the muscular and the electronic well, not electronic, but electric impulses coming through my fingers and my muscles are going to take a really long time to propagate that through such a long um, Mm -hmm. thing. So you want to hold it just a couple inches above, you know, like your knuckle. Okay. And the shorter uh, distance means that it it, it will respond quicker to your response or to your questions. Um, do you do that? You May want, I, could I, should I, or can I, do you use that phrase when you start each session? Sometimes I do. So this was a phrase that um, our friend Maggie taught us. Um, she was trained. Oh, what's that guy's name? I forget his name. Is it Harold um, something? Something like that. So she had learned from this really popular guy who does dousing. 
And it was like this whole meditation prayer that he taught them and that you should ask, may I douse on that? May I douse right now? Should I douse right now? Can I douse right now? Um, it's kind of like the universal law, like, especially, I guess if I were going to do it for somebody else, I might ask those because you, you don't want to cross somebody else's dominion, but I'm usually doing it for myself. So I feel like I already have my own permission, <laughs> you know, and I don't do it when I'm stressed out or upset or angry or anything like that, because I already know I don't get good responses. So I always feel like I have, I'm divinely protected and I'm you know, I just have the permission of my subconscious and higher self to do this. Um, but you could do that. Um, let's see. If you're using the pendulum, you just want to keep walking back and forth over the same area to make sure that you're getting reliable results. And like I said, start with simple questions or yes, no. And I always start with something that I know to be true. So like, I'll say, is my name Kelly? And you'll yeah. see it's already yeah. going back and forth because that's a yes answer if it were to go side to side I may be like hmm well I know my name is Kelly so something's wrong here <laughs> so you can go to the next slide oh I'm sorry um, I Kelly that's no, okay um I noticed somebody said that she I think it was Cheryl that said she does that with uh, with food <clears throat> I taught mm -hmm, my patients yeah. and had to do it when I was so sick even something organic that came out of my garden and I cooked, I was so sick that I had to use a pendulum to say, you know, will this nourish me or will this, you know, because I would, my throat would close and I tested it so many times and ate something just a little bit of what it said not to. And I got sick. So yeah. people say, well, that's subconscious. You were pre-programmed. No, it was my energy telling me don't eat that. Stay away from it. So that's yeah, a good way, premise. especially like yeah. this. Yeah, it's Cheryl said premise. you puts it over like, food. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, just like the muscle testing that Ellen taught us. And, and right. I think somebody else to talk about that too. I forget. Um, but yeah, it's the same premise. And it all works on the same um, protocol. So right. people will often say to me, like, well, what's moving the tool? And I think that might be on the next one. So this one's really more for people who are just reading the the slides after the fact, like if you ask the question, is George Washington the first U.S. president and you're getting a, a, a no, then that's not a really reliable question. So you can go to the next slide, Trace. So what moves it, right? If you're working with a pendulum, it's you. So what happens is you stimulate brain waves, right? And the brain waves send electrical impulses through your electrical system to your muscular system. And at the neuromuscular junction, synapses fire that cause your muscles to contract. So water, this is coming back to the hydration thing, water is extremely important in dousing because you need to hydrate your body to conduct those electrical impulses through your electrical, through your nervous system, and then also through your muscle, muscular system, you need the electrolytes as well, because if you don't have calcium, you can't enter the, the cell to start the muscular contraction. It all starts with calcium, mm -hmm. and magnesium within there, and then you need the sodium potassium pumps to open up so that you can have the change in the electrical uh, membrane to cause the muscular right. contraction. And so when that happens, your, your body your your hand your your fingers whatever are reading those electrical impulses from the brain waves and it's sending micro flexion and relaxation impulses to your fingers and through your hands and so while i'm standing here nothing's really happening but if i were to ask it a question it would my subconscious would say yes or no or my higher self or whatever would send that impulse see i'm saying yes no and so it's going front and back but i haven't moved my hand not consciously but they're micro muscular contractions that cause this to happen. So it is you that's doing it. When you're using a dousing rod, similarly, it's picking up, sometimes it's picking up your own um, reactions in your hands and stuff similarly, but there's these little um, things on the bottom that keep spinning around. So it's harder to influence it with just you. So in this case, mm -hmm. the copper, is really reacting to the bioelectric field around you. And it's picking up on the different minerals and you know components of the electrical field around you 
and that's what's telling it which direction to go. Um, similar with the forked sticks, it's it's maybe one of the either one. If you're not moving it, then it's the field around you. So you know, like that body electric theory and the whole EMFs. You know, we're bombarded with this stuff, and we put our put out our own fields that you know can control these things as well. So that's how all that works. <laughs> Uh, so the next slide is you can do this on your own. Um, it's just like a visual representation to show the counterclockwise, the clockwise, and like just the cardinal points, right? Simple yes or no, you know, or, you know, unknown, maybe whatever you want to call it. You could just, you don't need to get these fancy charts. I have some really cool charts that I've gotten like off of Etsy, um, or you could create them on like Canva and things like that. Things that, you know, going to tell you like what archangel you should, you should be asking for, for whatever's going on in your life, what chakra you should be working on. And the, some of the chakra ones I have go really deep into like, you know, your, all of your chakras, not just the, the seven major ones we think about. And it'll tell you how much it's blocked, you know, all these like really crazy things. Um, what else have I used it for? Days of the week, months of the year. Um, percentages or like the likelihood of something happening. Um, what else? Oh, I've used it. There's some, I have one. It's in a kind of like a wheel of fortune situation that goes on. And it's like all the different star seed races. So when I got that one, I was like doing everybody's reading to see what star seed, you know, nation they were from. And, and it was kind of cool. And, and a lot of the people, I didn't even know those particular star seed races. And when I looked up the qualities that they tend to possess, I was like, wow, that really is that person. <laughs> so like right on, you know, um, what else? Um, they have all different ones that you can get, but you don't have to do that. You, you don't have to spend any money. You don't have to do anything really like interesting like that. I've had times where I was, you know, looking for an answer for something and I had it narrowed down to like maybe five or six different choices. So I would just draw a little like diagram on a piece of paper with a pen or a pencil and just write it out and then hold my pendulum over that and have it point to the one that was most likely to be the answer. So in that case, I didn't have to spend any money. So, you know, I always tell people don't spend money on something like this, even though they may be cheap until it's something that you find that is working for you. Um, yep. Because some of those, uh, I bought those charts and I don't use most of them. So it's more of like a waste of money, um, but they are kind of fun and, and interesting to use when you do come across them. Um, let's see, what else? Any tips and tricks? Okay, things that you might be doing wrong if you're not getting like reliable answers or you're questioning the answers that you're getting. So we can be our worst, our own worst enemies, right? So maybe you're just not grounded enough. Maybe you're thinking about another question right after you've already asked the first question. You have to give it time to, to finish spinning or figuring out what direction it's gonna go in and clearly give you like a yes or no or, or point to a specific thing before you start even thinking of your next question, because it's all subconscious, right? So if you're just, if you ask one question and you're already thinking of another one, it's, you're not going to get the right answers because it's mm. already like, Move okay. Down. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Or if your questions are worded incorrectly, it's really important to make sure that you're very clear about what you're asking for. Um, if you have a limiting belief, like if you don't think it's going to work, it's not going to work, right? So maybe sit and reevaluate, like if you're if you're questioning if these answers are right, just because it couldn't possibly be right, you know, then you're already starting your session off on the wrong foot. Um, or maybe you're asking a question that there is no clear answer for. Like, will there ever be world peace? Well, who knows? Because the human race, you know, like how could it ever give you a clear answer on that? You know, like maybe in the next 10 years, maybe not, maybe in a thousand years, sure. How do we know for sure? There, you know, what timeline are we on? You know, so I, be careful asking questions that you can't find the answer to somewhere else to corroborate that. Um, especially in the beginning until you get used to it, because it can be really, uh, intimidating you'll start asking all kinds of questions and you'll think you're getting these like cool answers and it just you kind of just made it up <laughs> you 
um, but yeah, yeah, so I, that's yeah. why I, I always, um, I never use this for like diagnosing anything. Like for example, I'll use my sister as an example. She's been having a lot of chest pain and anxiety and stuff. I know she doesn't have cardiac problems because she's been tested up the wazoo, but you never know what could develop, right? So if I'm doing a, a dousing session on her and I say, is she having a heart attack? It's probably not a great idea, right? Because I could be getting a wrong answer. I take everything that I get with this thing with a grain of salt. I use it right. as things that I know to be true to confirm or things that like, okay, could this possibly happen tomorrow? Yes or no. But, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't base like a medical diagnosis or should I go to the emergency room or not on an answer right. I got from a, uh, <laughs> you know, a pendulum session or anything like that. Oh, other yeah, things I've used you. it for. I use it sometimes to figure out which solfeggio tone I should be listening to. Cause you know, there's, there's solfeggio tones that cover a lot of the same thing, right? But there's so many of them. And sometimes one, one frequency is better than another for something. So if I know, say I have a, a headache, well, there's probably five or six different solfeggio tones alone that I could use for that. Well, which one is the right one for me to use at this particular time? And so I'll often write them down on a piece of paper and let the, you know, the, the pendulum tell me, because it's not going to hurt me if I choose the wrong solfeggio tone, right? I'm still going to get a, a benefit from it somehow. So I would use it for that. Um, which, which vitamin today should I take, or should, should I use this brand over that brand? You know, they're probably both going to be beneficial in some way, but <laughs> you know, marginally this one over that one. Um, oh, I, I had a really cool, interesting, uh, interaction one time I was meditating or about to meditate and for some reason I went through this period where I just could not connect with meditation for some reason I was having a really hard time and so I was like well let me douse on it and so I asked you know if I should be using solfeggio tones I got a yes and then I I said you know which which one should I use and it pointed to you know the one for 963 which is like really the tear crown chakra I'm like okay and I said, should I ask for help from an archangel? And, you know, I got a yes. And I said, well, you know, which one should I use? And I have like a list of like, say three or four different ones that are known to help in different ways. And it, it pointed to Metatron and I'm like, okay. And I'm like, hey, let me try this. So I, I did, you know, med meditate, uh, or I should, I should say, I listened to the 963 Solfeggio tone for about 10 minutes. And then I started my meditation and I asked for help from Archangel Metatron. And I had this really cool experience where out of nowhere, I felt this like pulsation on the tip of my left big toe. It was, if I hadn't known better, cause I had like, you know, one of those face masks on, but um, nobody was home. It was just me. I could have sworn that somebody sat down on the foot of my bed and was touching me. I nearly jumped off the bed and ripped off the, the eye mask because that's how much it felt like a, a real person touching me. And I had this sensation come from my body kind of like in a wave. And it was the most amazing sensation. It didn't hurt, it didn't scare me. I was totally calm. But afterwards I felt energized. Like I could have, it was like, 12 or one o'clock in the morning, I could have gotten outside and run around the block for like an hour. And the whole <laughs> couple next days, I was just like energized, like, like the energizer bunny. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if that would have happened if I hadn't done that dousing, you know, situation right before and gotten those particular, you know, combinations. So it was really interesting. I don't know what it means, but it was fun. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions? Let's stop that share. I, yeah, I have, oh, a, Don. I have a comment that I think it could be kind of, oh, Don is there? Yeah, Don was raising her Go ahead. Honey. Hi, so that was really great, Kelly. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Um, a couple of things. I had learned from one of my healers that one, one of the things that she does, like when she's testing supplements for us, is she'll mm -hmm. say, is it beneficial effective and tolerable. And I love that because, yeah, I mean, it, it could have any number of things wrong with it if you just ask it a yes or a no, but that tends to narrow it down a little bit more. And I, mm -hmm. I'm in the grocery store and I'm like, I have a product like an oil yeah. and I'm looking at these different oils <laughs> and I pull out my, 
my and people are looking at me like what is she doing <laughs> I try to be a little covert about it but yeah. um, anyway um and one of our local clairvoyants said that you should use like the three fingers and there's something with the middle finger and it has something to do with that runs to another part of your body and she maintains like she likes the idea of kind of like making your hand like a umbrella and then uh -huh. do, and then holding it in your root chakra area like down you can't uh -huh. see but like down here and uh -huh. sometimes it does seem it work like it works a little bit better for me that way okay and cool. then and then I have two questions um one was about like a list of archangels and a chart oh she freezes she froze oh no <laughs> come back she had a question about your list of archangels and and the chart and the chart so probably where you, where did you get the charts it listed all that you you um blacked out for oh there john can you repeat that please oh yeah so the archangel like a list of archangels or a chart um i think that would that's awesome that would be so helpful and then um the other question was removing demons or micro demons and um have you ever used it for that and how would you do it i have not ever used it for that i wouldn't have the first clue how to do that maybe somebody else here has has experience with that but um i don't know i just you know people have asked me oh aren't you afraid of like attracting like negative entities or anything and i don't i've never been afraid of that um i just feel like we are all divinely protected and I, I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but I just feel like I am the, you know, the the sovereign entity and that I would never give permission for something like that to happen to me. And so in for me, it's not even in my vocabulary. So I wouldn't have even thought of that, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I could ask around and get back to you. <laughs> what about the what commands to clear? Like Cynthia said, it's really important that before you use the pendulum or anything like this, that you want to clear your energy field to make mm -hmm. sure that there's no, nothing else in or around you. So remember when we used yeah. to do the commands, I actually did it today. Um, I have a stressful conversation coming up with one of my kids. So I just said, I command my spirit to remove anything in on or around me. That's not for my highest good right now. And yeah. then then after that, doing that three times, and then I go, zoop, and I put up a, a shield, an energetic mm -hmm. shield. And I actually took a class. I can't remember which one it was because I've done so many, but where we did this and we put up our shield and then we, we tried to push each other with and without the shield and with the shield on, mm -hmm. you couldn't push them like you could physically. Um, right. So that was my- I've also heard- um. Palo Santo is good for clearing negative energy. Um, it is. Like that. It is. People That's what they all use in South States. America. Yep. They just for all energies, but Palo Santo is especially. Yeah, but Palo Santo good. is very specific. Uh, they all use it in South America. And it's Palo Santo very powerful brings itself. in good energy. It is an energy mess yes. brings it in. You want the sage to and clear sage it. sage takes to, to clear it out, yeah, you're right, it absolutely. <laughs> and Palo Santo means sacred bark or sacred board in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you're you're actually asking it to come in and basically protect you and help you where the sage you're saying, get it out of here. Yeah, yeah. Tracy's right. So you can sage, so Palo Santo. You can sage your house and then you can burn the yeah. stick, the wood. It's It almost looks like this um but it's yep. square the one i have and you so you sage you guys have seen the sage before i'm sure mm -hmm. it's um so you sage to clear it out and then just like you were doing with the dowsing over the chakras kelly and then you use the palo santo to bring in good energy so and right. frank and i always do it yes yes that's a great one tracy and but i always do it when i move into a new place before you move in Get out the energy of anybody that was there before. You buy a used car, clear that car before you start driving it. Okay, so and, Matt, yeah, there's your. She's got it right there, Susie. Oh, does. that's the sage. She's got the that that's, sage. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what you mm -hmm. used to clear it. So Magda has yeah. a question. Oh, there she is. Don has it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Magda. 
<laughs> Hi Kelly, that was really, really great and interesting. I've never done anything like this before and I'd like to learn. So my first question is, I have a big beat here. Can I make my own pendulum with that? Yeah. 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 Um, the, what I found, yeah, those, that's fine. If you're going to just ask like simple questions and you just want to get a simple yes or no, that's great. But if you're going to use any kind of charts where you're going to want to point to something specific, you want to okay. use something that comes to some sort of a point because okay. I, I made that mistake with something else. Um, with something like this. Yeah. Um, I had it on like a little, um, you know, a, a very short chain so it could swing back and forth. And it was so wide at the bottom that I was like, I can't tell what the heck it's pointing to, you oh, know, especially okay. if it's a smaller chart. So if you're going to do something like that, then you want something that comes to some sort of a point where you can more clearly delineate what it's pointing to. Okay. That's the only thing I think. But you could use anything. Like I said, the the one person who I was originally learning from, she's for 20 some 30 years, she was just using a, a, a simple piece of string and a, and a a nail or a screw or something on it on the bottom. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then my other question is, so the questions that you ask when you do this, does it only pertain to your personal self? Or let's say I'm worried about my kids who don't live near me and I want to know something, if something is wrong with them or if they're safe or whatever, you know, will it work if I ask a question mm -hmm. about one of my yeah. kids? Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to work if you, if you try yeah. to ask a question, like you don't know Tracy's children, so you're probably not going to get a reliable answer, but you could ask like a general question, like, oh, are Tracy's children okay? You know, and you might get some sort of answer, but you're not going to be able to ask more specific questions. You know, your children, so you could ask more specific questions yeah. and your higher self is connected to your, to your children as well. So you'd get really good answers for your child, even if they're far away, because you're always connected by the love, by the yeah. heart. Okay. okay. Right. And that might be a good time to use the may I, should I, can I? Yes. You know, yes. to ask permission. Good point. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay, Nancy. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Thanks, Magda. Hi, you guys. Um, yes, this is all totally new to me, too. So I'm going to have to watch it probably three times to absorb everything. But I have this rose quartz pendulum that. Yeah. a good friend. Can I use that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've That's what I use. Like a necklace that they wear all the time or like a special necklace or something that somebody gave to them or a ring on a, on a string, like a, on a necklace uh, thing, anything that, that will, it has, okay. So things that will swing the best are, are heavy, right? Cause you want it to be able to swing, but not so heavy that it's like, it takes a lot of effort. So it should be something relatively small with a little bit of weight to it, because if it's not heavy enough, it's not going to really swing. Or if you're in an area that has a little bit of um, breeze to it, like a fan going, it's, if it's like lighter than than what than the fan, it's just going to fall, you know, go all over the place with the fan. So it's got to have a little bit of weight to it so that it swings. And honestly, objects that you have a personal connection to, whether it's a necklace, a ring, um, some kind of a little trinket. Those are always great objects to use because all these objects collect our energy. And mm -hmm. um, I think, I forget, it might have even been um, somebody in our group that was saying, the more time you you have the, the object in your personal field, it gets to know you better and it picks up, on, you know, it's more attuned yep. to you. You can even clear the energies from your um, pendulums. Um, Selenite is a really good one. You would just kind of place it on it for a few minutes. Um, you could put it out in the on, in the the moonlight, the sunlight. It's coming up, could, yeah, yeah. There's lots of different ways you can clear the energy. So, like, if I was a practitioner and I was doing work on other people, I don't want to take their negative energy and then put it on somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, I would probably want to clear that energy off of there and start with a clean slate before I put that, you know pendulum near that other person because yep. you can absorb energy from other people too um Kelly, Kelly, what was that called selenite so, what i'm sorry it's super cheap. um i think this I think i'll this type it in the selenite. chat yeah i think it's like yeah. okay is it all is it also okay this is on a um 
silver chain. It's real light though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As long as it swings, yeah. and yeah. you can get an answer. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I don't. No, I don't want to hold it so high. Like I said, you probably want to hold it. You know, a little bit okay. closer to you. Yeah. You know, you oh, can sure. play with it, and, and it should. It should. You should. If you start it swinging, it should keep swinging for a second or two. Okay. Like I have. It'll have I have. I'm sorry. And now, I want to say, I don't use anything fancy. I okay. literally use my keychain, my key, my key, my key for my car and a key on it. And that's it. I don't. As long as it swings. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I have to just add, no, you guys. I... And that's just because somebody um, in QHS gave this to me for compassion, unconditional love. So um, when she watches this, she'll probably smile. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, thank you for sharing. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Kelly, I have a quick question, and I know we're running out of time. I was trained by an indigenous person, and mm -hmm. they said if it was something to do with our health, that it should be a, like a rose quartz. And so I always use a rose quartz when it has to do with health. I never did it on patients. I would show them how, but I never did it. I didn't feel it was appropriate or ethical in my in my position. But um, the rose quartz, I was told, should be for your personal health, not necessarily your kids. And then any other yeah. thing, including a screw, can be for anybody else. Have you heard that? Quartz, Tracy, in, general, or... quartz in general is very good for anything health related. Um, so rose yeah. quartz, clear quartz, yeah. snow quartz, all the all these different quartzes are right. excellent uh, conductors. Of are really good for that. for that. That's what I was told. So I always, like Nancy, though, I always use rose quartz for personal medical issues. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Cheryl, did you have a question? Yeah, it's just quick, quickly, and it's probably been answered somewhat, but on whatever you would be suspending it from, would something like silver or gold versus anything else make any difference to the effects? Or I don't think so, to be honest with you, because it's not the, that's not, the, actually the tool isn't what matters. What matters is whether or not you're asking a clear question and whether you're you're able to answer that, like from knowledge that you have in your subconscious or your higher self or from within the the, the bioelectric field that you're accessing. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Like Kira said, it's she uses her keychain, mm -hmm. you know, her key fob. So yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get an answer, that's all that matters. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. You are just such a wealth of Thank knowledge. You. I, you guys, I will post the PDF or excuse me, the PowerPoint. And when I share the replay, I will put the PowerPoint link in the description of the video on YouTube. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank so, you, Kelly. That was great. We appreciate Thanks for having you. me, guys. Thank you. Thank you for everything. And thank you, Dr. Gloria. So those of you who are going to stay for the meditation, Kira, and Kelly are going to go ahead and lead it. So Kara, I'm going to make you host and I have got to run. So I'll see you guys Thank tomorrow. You. Have a beautiful day. Thanks everyone. Bye Trace. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, you guys, here you go. Do you guys want to move around a little bit or do you want to get right into it? Do you need a second, a bathroom break or anything? Do you need a minute? Nope. Let's oh. dive right in. Okay. We're going to dive right in. I'm going to do a screen share. Whoops. I thought I was going to screen share. Apparently I wasn't ready. So I will close that again. And now I will do a screen share. And here we go. And I would appreciate a uh, Thumbs up if you guys have busy video and sound. And well, here we go. Welcome to today's Miracle Moment That's Meditation that. brought to you by QHS. Today, we will be guiding you through a meditation. It's important to note that this meditation is fast paced. We encourage you to remain present and aware throughout the session. If you experience visions or emotions, that's normal. Allow yourself to feel and acknowledge them and stay present. When you heal it in yourself, you heal it in others. At the end of the session, remember that the effects will continue to work, so if you feel the need to rest, take time to do so. 
Thank you for healing this beautiful world, starting with you. Begin by allowing yourself to settle into your current position, feeling the natural comfort of your own presence. Now gently close your eyes and turn your attention inward. Notice the natural rhythm of your breath as it flows in and out. Take a full, deep breath. Feel this breath filling every part of your body, nurturing and soothing you from within. As you exhale, allow yourself to let go of tension and discomfort. Recognize that these sensations are not you. They are trans. Sorry guys, it just started spinning. Let me restart. Oh. So sorry. Welcome to today's Miracle Moment Meditation. Feeling the natural comfort of your own presence. Now gently close your eyes and turn your attention inward. Notice the natural rhythm of your breath as it flows in and out. Take a full, deep breath. Feel this breath filling every part of your body nurturing and soothing you from within. As you exhale, allow yourself to let go of tension and discomfort. Recognize that these sensations are not you. They are transient, merely passing through. With this realization, watch as they dissolve into nothingness, leaving no trace behind. You are boundless, free from these sensations and their definitions. With each breath, Feel them dissipate as you become more present, more peaceful, and profoundly centered in your true essence. Now let's deepen your experience with a breathing exercise that will enrich your meditation, creating a beautiful synergy between your inner and outer worlds. Focus on the soft sound of your breath at the back of your nose, reminiscent of the gentle whispers of ocean waves. The audible sound of your breath, like the ocean waves, anchor you to the present, connecting the vastness of the outer world with the depths of your inner being, automatically establishing harmony and coherence between your body, mind, brain, heart, and all of your energetic and spiritual systems. There is nothing else to do but be in this moment, deeply relaxed, fully supported, and profoundly at peace. Now bring your attention to your body. Identify the part of your body that feels the most relaxed at this moment. It could be as small as the tip of a finger or as large as your entire back. Focus your attention on this area. Observe how this relaxation feels, how deep 
how serene it is, and imagine this feeling beginning to spread. Like watercolor on wet paper, allow this sense of relaxation to expand, moving gently to neighboring areas in your body. With each breath, this soothing sensation grows, filling you up. Breathe deeply, rhythmically, and with full breaths. Imagine the relaxation spreading further and further. Notice that it's no longer just a part of you that's relaxed. Your entire being feels embraced by this calming energy. As you continue to breathe deeply, envision waves of relaxation cascading across your body. Each wave washes over you bringing deeper calm and more profound peace. These waves are rhythmic, aligned with your breath, sweeping through you, around you, beneath you, and even beyond you. Feel yourself being carried by these waves of relaxation, deeper and deeper into a state of complete serenity. Here, in this space, you are free to explore the depths of your inner world and to dive into the vast ocean of you. Let's tune in to the quantum twine waves. Take a deep, full breath allowing yourself to fully immerse in the presence of the quantum twine waves surrounding you. Feel these waves embracing you, infusing you, and offering their gentle support. As you inhale deeply, visualize the quantum twine waves penetrating your body from the crown of your head to your toes. Sense the waves flowing through you, fostering a profound connection and resonance with your perfect wholeness. With each exhale, release any tension or resistance, allowing the quantum twine waves to permeate every aspect of your being. Notice the sensations as these waves interact with your cells, filling them with radiant light and revitalizing energy. Experience the warmth and vitality of this divine presence as it spreads throughout your entire being. Acknowledge the presence of Christ Consciousness, the sacred energy that embodies unconditional love, compassion, and healing within these waves. Feel this divine energy permeating every aspect of your being, illuminating your path, and guiding you toward wholeness. As you breathe in, envision your cells awakening to the healing energy of the quantum twine waves and Christ Consciousness. Feel a harmonious alignment spreading throughout your body as every cell vibrates in tune with waves of wholeness and unconditional love. Continue to breathe deeply Surrender to the process of integration. Trust the quantum twine waves and Christ consciousness intuitively know where they are needed, guiding you toward a state of wholeness and well-being. Witness yourself as you bask in the deep sense of peace and relaxation that accompanies this surrender to divine energy.
Now shift your awareness inward to the God spark residing within you. This sacred essence serves as your eternal connection to the source of creation, reminding you of your inherent divinity and sacredness. Feel the God spark igniting within you, filling you with a profound sense of purpose and empowerment. Witness as it radiates throughout your entire being, illuminating every cell with its divine light. Feel the quantum twine waves harmonizing with your God spark and the Christ energy, amplifying their power and potency. With each breath, these divine energies mingle and merge within you, creating a symphony of love and light that resonates throughout your entire being. As you continue to breathe and visualize, surrender to the profound transformation unfolding within you. Trust in the wisdom and guidance of these divine energies, knowing they are guiding you toward a deeper connection with your sacred self. Let this integration fill you with peace, strength, and healing as we transition into our meditation. Guided by the radiant light of the Christ energy, the unwavering presence of your God spark, and the powerful embrace of the quantum twine waves. Now nestle in, relax, and enjoy your miracle moment. This journey begins with the understanding that the path to the collective healing starts at the core of our individual being. As we nurture and restore our own wellness and wholeness, we create ripples that extend beyond ourselves. In cultivating self-love, we find that love extends outward naturally. By healing ourselves, we lay the foundation to contribute to the healing of others. Every act of self-care is a stepping stone toward a healthier humanity, where healing ourselves becomes the catalyst for healing the world around us. Let's begin this process of transformation and embrace the wholeness that is our true nature. To begin, focus your attention inwardly and scan your body gently with your mind's eye. Notice how different areas of your body feel. As you continue this gentle observation, search for a spot within you where you feel a sense of wellness, wholeness, or joy. It might be a warm feeling in your heart, a lightness in your chest, or a calm space in your mind. Should you feel that a space of wellness isn't immediately apparent within your body, allow yourself to gently expand your search. It might reveal itself in a cherished memory, a hopeful vision of the future, or within the quiet depths of your spirit or soul. Trust that your wellness exists within you in many forms and places, waiting for your recognition. Your journey to locate it is unique to you, and finding it is the only thing that matters. Once you have found this spot of wellness, wholeness, or joy, Focus your attention on it. Observe its qualities, how it feels, the sensations that come with it, the sense of completeness it brings. Breathe into this space, and with each breath, envision the sensations of wellness intensifying and becoming more vibrant. Whether it manifests as warmth, a sense of completeness, or an inner glow, Feel it as it amplifies within you. Now with intention, begin to allow this sensation of wellness to expand, like the warmth of the sun spreading at dawn. Let it gracefully move through your body. With each breath, it grows, filling you from head to toe, reaching into every cell, every space within you. Visualize this wellness, wholeness, and joy moving beyond the physical. See it extending into your energetic systems, illuminating them with its wholesome light. It brings balance to your emotions, 
clarity to your thoughts, and a deep sense of peace to your spirit. As you continue to breathe, a sense of complete wellness encompasses your entire being. You are in harmony with yourself, body, mind, and soul. In this space, you understand wellness, wholeness, and joy are at the heart of your natural state, a core part of who you are. Feeling this wholeness as a steady, unwavering presence within you, it's always there, always accessible. Anytime you wish to reconnect with this feeling, simply turn your focus inward. Now let's embrace a quiet moment together. This pause and guidance invites you to personally engage with the quantum twine waves, deepening your connection and enhancing your experience to its fullest potential.
When you feel ready, gently bring your awareness back to the present moment. Take a few deep breaths, and when you open your eyes, carry this sense of wellness and wholeness with you, letting it infuse every moment of your day. As we conclude this meditation, step forward with confidence, knowing that the quantum twine waves continue to flow within you. Their positive influences remain active, extending far beyond our shared time in this space. Take this step and every step hereafter with the knowledge that you are blessed. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to share regarding the meditation? Sandy, are you raising your hand or just reaching for something? <laughs> I can't tell. Just reaching for something? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. I appreciate you tuning in to listen to me talk about dowsing. Does anybody else have any other questions or anything before we close out? No? All right. Well, we'll close out here. Thank you all for coming and see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.